So OpenAI recently announced their new O3 model for ChatGPT. Some people are claiming it's nearing AGI, which is artificial general intelligence. Artificial general intelligence. AGI refers to the hypothetical intelligence of a machine that possesses the ability to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. It is a- Yeah, and that's a pretty big deal. But other people are saying it's bogus and there's nothing that's really new here. Either way, it's really, really expensive. So let's dive into it. Before that, yes, I am still alive. I'm working on something really, really big though. So stay tuned for that because it's coming very soon. So, so first off, what even is O3? Well, O3 comes after O1, which is a model that OpenAI released earlier in the year. It's basically regular chat GPT, but really slow. So it can really take the time to process and think through what you want it to do. So O3 is supposed to be an updated version of that. Hopefully one that can solve the incredibly difficult problem of counting how many R's there are in the word strawberry. And truly enough, this model is supposed to be better at fact checking itself and reasoning through things before giving you a response. So O1 was the first large reasoning model. It's just an LLM trained with RL, which is reinforcement learning. And O3 is powered by further scaling up this reinforcement learning beyond O1. So it's really just a beefed up version of O1. But the big deal here is that some people are claiming that it's nearing this definition of artificial general intelligence. How are we even testing what AGI is? Like, are we coming up with something that can evaluate humans too? Well, it turns out the answer to this is yes. This graph is depicting a test called ArcAGI, and you can see on the y-axis, it's labeled semi-private score. So this is basically a test that was designed by researchers to measure the reasoning skills of AI. And we can actually take a look at how it works. It's actually very simple, and to us humans, most of the tests are very, very easy. You're basically shown this grid of colored squares and a before and after of some sort of modification to it but you don't know what the modification is. So you can pretty clearly tell in this one that the modification is that we're filling in all the empty gaps with yellow squares. And how well the AI is able to do that with a set of squares that they've never seen before is how we're actually measuring its intelligence here. So no words, just pure reasoning. So even though this test seems very simple to us humans who are really good at pattern recognition, AI is still failing at some of the really easy things to do here. But despite that, it is succeeding at far higher rates than most of the other AI models that we have out now. Like you can see on this graph, a one is scoring in like the low, the low bottom left, maybe reaching the 30%. And then we have O3 all the way on the right at like 70 to 80%. But if you look at the X axis, this shit is expensive. Can you imagine in the future asking ChatGPT to help you with a homework problem? And then it's like, Give me $50. Over time, we will see this becoming a smaller and smaller issue. Obviously the price for running AI is a race to the bottom and it's only gonna get cheaper as we like know more about it. We develop better hardware for it. Like there are already companies that are working on AI specific chips, for example. But even now it is still doing some very impressive things. Like for example, it's the 175th best human competitive coder on the planet. Uh, whatever that means. It's Jover. It's so Jover. But me personally, I have this very like deep-seated skepticism for how we're approaching AI right now. And if you've been keeping up with Apple since our last homomorphic encryption video, researchers there published a paper that basically said AI can't reason. We found no evidence of formal reasoning in language models. Their behavior is better explained by sophisticated pattern matching. So fragile, in fact, that changing names can alter results by 10%. So if you don't know how AI right now works, or LLMs as you would call them, a gross oversimplification is that it's fancy autocorrect. It's looking at what you give it, which is your text, your images, your video, whatever. And depending on what you're asking it to do, it's literally just predicting what's supposed to come next. But because of how this is built, it's really hard for us to tell what exactly is going on inside the AI's head. So what these Apple researchers did was they added these random irrelevant details as part of their prompt when they're asking the AI to solve a problem. And in a lot of the cases, the AI would take this information, which shouldn't affect the output at all, and factor it in. So I'm not a mathematician or an AI researcher. If you wanna know more about this kind of stuff, I suggest that you read this article because it's obviously gonna cover a lot more than I can explain. But the foundation of what we're building AI on top of is fundamentally flawed in this way. And obviously it isn't flawed to the point where we can't do normal interactions with it. 
Like, of course, it can solve simple problems, it can write code, but when we're talking about stuff like AGI, it gets a little more complicated. You know this is a serious model announcement when they bring out the Twink. But besides O3, OpenAI also announced Sora, which is their text-to-video platform, and it's... it's alright. What really surprised me is that Google released one right after, and it's actually much better. Although I'm honestly not sure if I trust Google after the whole Gemini crash out thing. As a content creator, I am a little bit scared of this. It's already creating some awful memes. But with the rate that things are advancing, it's really hard to tell where we'll be in two, three, even 10 years. But hey, that's all I have for you today. Stay tuned for that big project that I'm working on because it will be out very soon. And I will see you in 2025. Wow. Okay.